With the successful docking of their Wentian module, the Chinese space program has now completed two-thirds of the construction for their next generation orbital space station, the Tiangong. Continuing at this rapid pace, the Chinese are expected to send their third module into orbit in the fall and bring the station to full operational capacity before the end of this year. And that's a really big deal for human space exploration, but for a myriad of reasons, it's not really something that people in the Western world really know about or understand very well. We're all really good at getting stoked for the James Webb Space Telescope or the Mars Rover or launching rockets to the moon, but somehow the first modern space station deployed in the 21st century goes largely unnoticed. Yeah, the ISS is from the 90s. The Seinfeld finale and the first ISS module launch happened in the same year. So let's talk about the Tiangong and its newest addition, the Wentian Research Module. What's going on up there? What is China's plan for the future of their space station? And why did China decide to develop their own space station in the first place? This is the Space Race. So it might seem like this station came out of nowhere, but this is actually phase three of a plan that China started back in the 90s that they called Project 921. This is kind of like China's blueprint to conquer space. Phase one of the plan was the development and launch of a crew-capable rocket and spacecraft. These would be the Long March 2F and the Shenzhou, which both launched for the first time in 1999. The Long March series of rockets take their name from Mao Zedong's history as a war hero and leader of the People's Red Army. The name Shenzhou means Divine Vessel. By 2003, this system had put the first Chinese Taikonaut into low Earth orbit on the Shenzhou 5 mission. This began Phase 2 of the plan, which was essentially a practice phase. By Shenzhou 7, the Chinese had performed their first spacewalk using their own extravehicular suits. Following that, the country began to deploy test modules that were like miniature space stations. Chinese crews would make their first extended stays in space and practice docking maneuvers between the test modules and the Shenzhou. This time also marked the development of China's Tianzhou spacecraft, or Heavenly Ship, which is a cargo transport vehicle with a carrying capacity of 6,500 kilograms. This spacecraft was designed to fly on the new Long March 7 rocket, a modern replacement for the 2F that was first launched in 2016. Phase 3 of the plan is where we are right now. The development and assembly of a new space station, the Tiangong, or Heavenly Palace. So why does China feel so strongly about creating their very own space station? Well, for one, because it's really cool. Who wouldn't want their own personal hangout in space? But secondly, also, it probably has more to do with the Chinese being banned from the International Space Station, which is obviously counterintuitive to the literal name of the station. But in 2011, the United States decided that China was prohibited from visiting the station. The Chinese ban was specifically rolled out through a Department of Defense Act passed in the U.S. Congress, which stipulated that NASA may not use their funding to collaborate in any way with China. The reasons given focused around human rights issues and national security. More than anything, the U.S. was afraid that China would steal their ideas or spy on them or something, which is a reasonable concern given that both the U.S. and China have been heavily involved in a ton of shady spy stuff for the better part of a century, and that's created a lot of paranoia. Anyway, the Chinese decided to hell with them, we'll build our own, and here we are. We are fans of learning and keeping up with the latest news, which is why I'm excited to share today's sponsor, Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter that gets you up to speed on business, finance, and tech news in just five minutes. As I grow my YouTube channel as a business, I find it more and more interesting to learn about other businesses and how I can best set myself up for future success. It also doesn't hurt to keep up to date with the financial markets during these times, which is why I start my day with Morning Brew. With Morning Brew, I can start my day with news that's witty, relevant, and informative, unlike the traditional news, which is 
Not the best to put it nicely, and it's completely free. Starting my day with the Morning Brew newsletter helps me set up the rest of my day's success by keeping me focused and up to date with news that's relevant to me in a fun bite-sized package. I recently learned that the FCC commissioner doesn't trust TikTok and sent a letter to Apple and Google asking them to remove TikTok from their app stores over concerns that the Chinese government could access sensitive data. There's no reason not to subscribe to The Morning Brew if you're interested in business, finance, or tech. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. So click the link in the description below to subscribe to Morning Brew today, and let's get back to the video. So the first module of Tiangong successfully reached orbit in April of 2021. This core structure is called the Tianhe, which means harmony of the heavens. The Tianhe is a 20-ton structure with a maximum diameter of 4.2 meters and contains everything necessary for a functional space station that can support a crew of three. It has solar panels, propulsion systems, life support, a robotic arm, and a sophisticated docking node and airlock. There are three main sections to the core module. Starting at the smaller end, there is a spherical multi-docking node, this has four ports, with one obviously being permanently attached to the Tianhe. The port opposite to the core module is the main docking port for the station. This is where the Shenzhou crew vehicle and Tianzhou cargo vehicle can dock. This is also the location where additional modules will make their first connection to the station. And this is where the latest Wenqian module is currently located, making the station a long, linear structure. But that's not how it's going to stay. The two side ports on the multi-docking node are berthing ports. These will be the permanent homes for the second and third modules, creating a T-shaped station in its final form. The bottom port on the node is a crew docking port. This one only supports the Shenzhou craft, and the top port is actually not a docking port at all. It's a hatchway. This is for the crew to exit the station and perform spacewalks. Moving up to the smaller cylindrical section of the Tianhe, this is the crew quarters. There are individual bunks for three crew members and all of the necessary facilities like the space toilet. And then at the large end of the core module is a working area with three experimental racks. This is also where the propulsion section of the station is located. This maintains orbital control. and. Lastly, there is another docking port at the end of the module that is specifically for the Tianzhou cargo craft. This is also a future docking port for the Chinese Space Telescope. The Tianhe is also the module that supports the station's main robotic arm, which is 10 meters in length. It's a little shorter than the Canada Arm 2 that is currently in operation at the ISS, which is 17 meters long, but the Chinese arm does have a similar capability and the possibility for expansion, which we'll touch on more in a bit. On July 24th, China launched their Wentian Research Laboratory module for the Tiangong. The name Wentian translates as Heavenly Quest. This is another 20-ton structure that was deployed on the Long March 5B rocket. This is China's first heavy lift space launcher and is responsible for getting the three modules of the Tiangong into their 400 km high orbit. The Long March 5B configuration is a really interesting rocket design. It uses a hydrogen fuel burning core stage and is strapped with four liquid fueled side boosters that burn RP1 kerosene. This combination makes the Long March 5B the third most powerful rocket currently in service around the world behind the Falcon Heavy at number 1 and the Delta IV Heavy. The process that this particular rocket uses to put these 20-ton payloads into their orbital path is pretty unique and very controversial. So, once the rocket clears Earth's atmosphere, which happens at about 100 kilometers in altitude, those four side boosters will drop off, but the core booster engine will continue to burn. A typical rocket will have a full stage separation at this point, where the entire lower two-thirds or so of the rocket will detach and fall back down to Earth, where it usually splashes into the ocean. And again, on a typical rocket, a second stage engine will then fire up to propel what's left of the rocket and the payload 
into the orbital insertion. Long March 5B doesn't do that. After the four side boosters drop off, the rocket stays whole and the core booster engines propel the module all the way to its orbital insertion point before finally separating. That means the majority of the rocket's structure is now in orbit, so it won't just fall straight back down into the ocean. But it's not in a stable orbit either, so it won't stay up there. It's going to circle the Earth for a few days as it slowly loses altitude and gets pulled back into the atmosphere. These are too big to just vaporize like a regular satellite. It doesn't stay whole, but chunks are going to make it all the way to the surface. That's why this particular Long March 5B booster stage broke up over the Indian Ocean and rained down scrap metal over the islands of Indonesia. Anyway, the Wentian module serves dual purpose on the space station. It has an additional three crew sleeping quarters that bring the total capacity of the station up to six people at once, and it also provides space for a variety of scientific experiments. It also houses two giant solar panels that give the module a 55 meter wingspan from tip to tip. These are state-of-the-art solar cells that are super thin and flexible to maximize the amount of surface area that could be deployed. They're also extremely efficient and generate around 7 kilowatts of electricity for the station. There are four experimental rack spaces on the Wentian containing research projects on life sciences, biotechnology, and variable gravity effects. Then, moving towards the smaller end of the module, there is a space for external experiments. This is basically a section where they can attach nodes to the outside hull of the ship to collect data. And crew can access the external attachment points through the airlock and hatch on the Wentian. This will become the primary airlock of the station for spacewalks. The crew can also access these attachment points using a secondary robotic arm that comes with the Wentian. This one is just 5 meters in length, but the cool thing about this arm is that it can actually crawl around the station and operate from different locations. So there are multiple attachment points for the arm around the station, and to crawl, the arm just grabs onto the next attachment point and then lets go of the previous attachment point. And it can just keep repeating this maneuver all around the station, like a kind of weird robotic caterpillar thing. What's more, this secondary arm can actually link up with the main arm to form one 15 meter long robotic arm that would essentially match the size and capability of the Canada Arm 2 on the ISS. The secondary robotic arm also has a role to play in the final positioning and berthing of the Wentian. So like we said earlier, the new module is currently sitting at the primary docking port for the Tiangong, but it can't stay there. It has to move over to its permanent berthing port on the starboard side of the station. To do that, the 5 meter robot arm will actually grab onto the Tianhe, disconnect the Wentian, move it over to the side and reconnect the Wentian to its berthing port. So at that point, the station will have an L shape and the primary docking port will be freed up again. The third and final big piece of the puzzle is called Mengtian or Heavenly Dream. This is another research laboratory module that is scheduled for launch in October 2022. The Mengtian is going to be very similar to the Wentian, with the biggest difference being that Mengtian won't have any crew sleeping quarters, so it will have more space for experimental racks. Also, the Mengtian will have its own airlock that will primarily serve as a cargo port. The Mengtian will also have its own giant solar panel array identical to the Wentian. So the addition of the third module will fully energize the station and bring it up to full functionality. And then what they're going to do at that point is actually use the combined robotic arm to disconnect the solar panel arrays from the core Tianhe module and move them out to the tips of the research modules. There's a point there where they can attach and that will create two large T-shaped solar arrays at the tips of the station. And then there's the Chinese Space Telescope. All we know is that it is currently in development and will likely have similar capabilities to the Hubble Telescope. This is designed to operate independently from the Tiangong, 
It will orbit close by, but it's not an attached section of the station. The telescope will have the capability to dock with the Tiangong so that it can be easily serviced and upgraded over time, which is something that can't be easily done with the Hubble and is virtually impossible to do with James Webb. So that's a big advantage. And that's going to be the final form of the Tiangong station. Or is it? One interesting thing that we've learned is that China actually built two copies of the Tianhe core module. One to serve as a backup just in case anything went wrong with the first attempt. And there's no reason to believe that they've just thrown that spare module into the garbage or something. So I wouldn't be surprised if we start hearing about China's plans to expand the Tiangong sometime very soon. And then maybe that additional core module gets its own pair of research modules and before too long, the station could double in size. Hopefully that's helped everyone get a better picture of how the Tiangong operates and what's going on up there. This information is very hard to come by and that's really unfortunate. Hopefully there's going to be a day when global political tensions cool off and we can all work together and stuff. Of course, given the current situation and based on whatever is happening right now around Taiwan, that clearly won't be anytime soon. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.